What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Local Legends. If With you... the Local Legends. Oh, whatever, bro. Right. Oh, yes, my sir. gosh. Yes, sir. If you don't know, Local Legends, uh, we have local legends that come on and we just talk about music, about church, about whatever comes up. So today we have you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the guy. James Hart, everyone. James Hart. Hey. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> All right, bro. I'm, I'll tell you what. This has been a long time coming. And yes. you are definitely a local legend. All right. So I am the lowest of the what? local legends. Oh, my legends, gosh. Hey, every, everybody's so <laughs> humble when they come on. Whatever, bro. That's so true. Stop That's it. It's so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So uh, tell the people, you know, what you're about. You guitar player. Yeah, man. Shredder. Just, that, just go for it. I, I, I kind of left the shredding in, in, in the... Good, good for in, you. In the bro. in the past, the <laughs> you know I so we'll get a little bit into it, but I am we're a family of three. Yes, um, I've got two brothers. Let me stop you. Yes, related to the Kevin Hart. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I have a brother named Kevin Hart. Nice, not not the, the but Kevin Hart. Close but enough. but close all enough. the jokes, man. People are like, your name's Kevin Hart. Are you funny? <laughs> Yeah, that. of course. All they, that they think they're funny. Bro. Yeah. So my my second, uh, there I'm the oldest. Got a younger brother and then a younger brother after that. So the second oldest is actually the true shredder. Yes. Sir. Of of you know the family. I I faked that stuff. Grew up, <laughs> and you know I, I'm trying to learn stuff on guitar and like, hey Brandon, learn this song with me. So we can we can play it. We you started in like metal, like Devil Wears Prada, August Burns Red, all that different kind of stuff. And he was like, okay. And like I'd spend a whole week and a half, two weeks, <laughs> trying to struggle bust through this song. And he's got it in like two hours. Just Insane. you know, picks up whatever and everything. So and then the other brother is a drummer. Um, and so you've played a lot Incredible. with him. And, Incredible drummer. You know, he we play all the time together we write together all that different kind of stuff so yeah man yeah bro. it's good we sh i i'll get them on yeah at some yeah point. yeah so yeah a songwriter worship guitar player yes sir um i do media and and tech for agape media videographer editor Ooh, all that shout out yeah man so yeah all right time. yeah exactly so um it's a favorite question that we ask everybody is um what's your first musical memory like what what like uh cemented you in like oh i'm gonna i'm oh, gonna yeah. do that yeah yeah because like when uh, okay when i hear that i'm like bro i don't know like what was i like you know eight <laughs> exactly <laughs> and like right. you know i heard something and and whatever no nah, man i was super late to music and it was probably Hilariously enough, anyone who who knows, if you played Guitar Hero, mm -hmm. Guitar Hero 3, Dragon Force. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heard Dragon Force, and I was like, uh, bro. However they do that, I want to do that. Yeah, bro. Could never do that. Bro. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what did it. But, that's like... <laughs> After like that, like still sticking with like the Guitar Hero three theme, like Kill Switch Engage, yes, and learning bro. like, yo, that dude like has like in some insane vocals, and then find out he's black, and like to me, black community, metal is not <laughs> <laughs> what African Americans gravitate to. Right. So like to see that, hear that, I'm like, dude, that guy is sick. Like, what the heck is that about? And it just put me onto this massive rabbit trail into, like, metal music, hardcore music, post-hardcore music, whatever you want to, you know, separate the genres into. Yeah. Um, and, like, kind of just took me into that rabbit hole of, of music and guitar playing. Um, my brothers were the first ones to pick up Guitar Hero and really master it. And that turned into us buying a dumpy $75... <laughs> Uh, what was it? BC Rich Warlock. Yes. You know? <laughs> that could barely work, barely stayed in tune. And uh, bro, we were just single note, like shredding on stuff and just taught ourselves how to play. And I was around 20 that's at crazy. that point, dude. So, oh, yeah, that's, that's how we started getting into 
into just the world of music and guitar and right. stuff like that. So, dude, awesome, bro. Um, you know, you mentioned your brothers, and obviously, um, you guys still mess around together. Um, so, what is it like to lead um, and just play with your brothers all the time? Like, I, I know some siblings fight and, like, duke it yeah. out and, like, lose touch, but you guys are still super tight, bro. Yeah, and man. Keep going at it. You know, there's one thing I, I love about my family, about my brothers, and, like, there would be people, friends, that would just gravitate to our household and mm-hmm. our family because they're like, I don't like my house. <laughs> I have issues with my parents. I have issues with my siblings, whatever. And like they come over to our house and our brothers are always hanging out together. The thing they don't realize is it wasn't always that way. Yeah. So like we grew up as like any normal family with siblings where like I'm the oldest, so I'm the boss. You know, my brothers don't want to listen to what I have to say. So then, you know, like there's chores to be done and they don't want to do them. And mom gets home, chores aren't done, I get in trouble for it. So I'm beating my brothers up. You know, <laughs> like, it, it was that. We butt heads and we did everything like normal siblings did. Mm-hmm. But when we got older and I hit around 19, 20, Brandon's like, you know, 16, 17. And we just look at each other one day and I'm like, bro, I'm sorry for ever hurting your feelings, hurting you physically with wrestling or whatever, you know, I, I love you and I don't want us to be like that. And Brandon looked at me and was like, I deserved most of it. (laughs) And we hugged it out. And that, that moment was like, we're best friends from here on out. And Kevin just joined along with that journey. We've treated each other different ever since. And music was just something that came alongside with that right. and so when we talk about playing music together or writing music together or you know uh critiquing music or you know we're all in ministry brandon's a sound guy you know i'm tech and worship leader or stuff like that i can go ask for feedback he can ask for feedback it just you know is this ever growing relationship of health and growth yeah. that we just love to have we're always talking about how we can improve what we love why do we love that you know different stuff like that so that just shows yeah. you what kind of man <laughs> this guy is right here man just working it out yeah man a big bro <laughs> i've always seen you as a big brother so i yeah man your family you're it, crazy it's, it's all good We've gone, we've done, we've done some stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> some fun stuff. And more to come, bro. Hey. More to come. I'm always for sure. down for <laughs> that, bro. So, like you said, uh, three brothers, or three of you total. Right. Your mom must have met, went insane. I'm, I'm one of four, so. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I know, I know how it is. How has um, your mom... I, I just know your mom. Yeah. And for those that don't know your mom, oh. I guess kind of, well, for She all, is the local legend. Exactly. Bro. <laughs> you're, you're missing out, bro. <laughs> but how has your mom supported y- your musical journey? Bro, my mom's the best mom ever, dude. Yeah, bro. And, like, when when I was getting into worship and, like, the gear. <laughs> The gear nightmare, bro, (laughs) of like, (laughs) ah, crap, man, I need to have this sound and I need to be able to do this to replicate like all the people that we admire in the the worship world. And, um, you know, you start out with your overdrive pedal Mm -hmm. and a delay pedal and a reverb pedal and, you know, a volume pedal and all this. All you need a board and, you know, all of that junk and like you know you're you're buying cheap to start just to get there and then you replace as you get money for better gear bro (laughs) and like (laughs) my board at this point is about three grand (laughs) yeah it slips away yeah dude (laughs) so quick big sky timeline you know strymon pedals the the walrus audio pedals you know just just the madhouse of 
you know, solid gear that I have, the majority of that board was bought by my mom. Insane. Just like Christmases would come up mm-hmm. and she's like, all right, what is, is there anything that you need? Upgraded on, you know, your board to to make that sound, you know, the way that you want it to sound is like, you know, I, I'm, I've been saving up. I've been fighting for trying to get there was one Christmas. She got me the timeline and the big sky she as a pair. Just like and I asked for one. I was like, I'll get one one year. I'll get the other. That's, that's eight hundred dollars in pedals, dude. Yeah, bro. Eight hundred dollars off rip. And like, just it was like, you know, you're on stage, you're doing this. I love that it's a passion of yours. I'm here to support it. That's and incredible. you know, it wasn't just me. She was doing the same thing for Brandon as a guitar player. So mm-hmm. like, his boards decked out, my boards decked out. We we're buying Kevin cymbals, you know, for his drums. You know, if he needs them, you know, different kind of stuff like that. My mom is like, Jesus, music whatever man go go do it whatever you need she you know i've got a keyboard in here she you know bought me the keyboard one year because i was trying to get into writing music and Mm -hmm. wanted to be more portable with it um didn't bring this 88 you know keys keyboard got me a 24 um and yeah just got sounds got beat making in it it's got all this different kind of software um so yeah she has just been there on top of the reason why everyone absolutely loves and adores her is she sits in the front row and she screams at you, dude. <laughs> Just screams at you. Has her hands raised. Is the most engaged worshiper mm-hmm. in the room all the time. And like, if, if I'm ever gonna lead, <laughs> or if, um, like, it's like, mom, I need you there because like you. I need you there to like just be in the room. And to just, she transforms a room, um, a room's atmosphere with her worship. And uh, she's really just a treasure. And when people like go up to her and they're like, you must be so proud. She's like, look, I I don't even see him. Like they, she's proud to know where we're going. Mm-hmm. When we all die, we're going to go see Jesus. Yeah, that right. That is what she cares about. The music, the whatever, it's like, yeah, that's cool. Like, I'm glad they're they're you know up there doing that, but it's really that for her is the end goal. She knows where we're going, and um, yeah, man, she she's a fire. If anyone deserves the best mom mug, yeah, dude, it's her, absolutely, hands down. <laughs> and so yeah, she's always there. Um, always. She's always looking to just enter into worship. Um, we, we joke with people all the time. It's funny stories. Like, uh, you know, you're doing something right. If she's got her eyes closed and her hands up, something is going wrong. If that's not the case, yeah. somebody's playing a bad note. She wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> what the heck is going wrong, but she's just staring. Like, oh boy. <laughs> oh, something, something ain't right, bro. Right. So funny. Yeah, bro. Um, so like you said, got the keyboard in the bag. Yeah, so man. I've had the pleasure being in one of your music videos. Come on. Hey, come on. You bro. <laughs> your music is fire. Well, I appreciate it. Doc. So where can, where can the people find your music, bro? Everywhere. Doc. Everywhere. Spotify. Apple music, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you can stream. Uh, it's on YouTube in some places. Yeah, yes, man. Sir. So it, it's all out there. Olive branch music. Yeah, so, okay, perfect. What? Explain, explain the name. Let's, Olive Branch. Yeah, yeah, bro. Okay, so we, Laura and I, were going to hang out with some of our friends in Canton. Um, reach one. Hey. With Marcus. Yes, sir. Um, Braden came out and played a show with us. <laughs> and where where was that? It wasn't Canton specifically. Was Youngstown. Youngstown. That's yeah. right. Um, and we were, we were driving up on one of our times, just visiting and hanging out with them. And one of my favorite things to do on long drives like that, uh, I hate driving. Yeah. And (laughs) I'm one of those people, if I get comfortable, I fall asleep. 
It's dangerous, dude. It's so bad. And, like, I have to be distracted while driving for long periods of time or else I'm going to fall asleep. So, Lara's chilling. She's knocked out. And one of my favorite things to do on the road is just listen to the Bible. Um, So, I'm going through um, somewhere in the Old Testament. I wish I had looked up the verse. But... um, it said something to the effect of, I want to be an olive, an olive tree that grows in the house of the Lord. Mm. And I was like, God, that is, that's me. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to be. So I want to be seated in the house of the Lord and be like a tree that's growing. And, um, yeah. So like Laura ended up waking up and I'm like, what if like, you know, with all the songs that I'm writing, if, I I called the band Olive Tree. Olive Tree was taken. That's fine. (laughs) And so I was like Olive Branch. And the whole, the whole purpose for Olive Branch for me, um, as it grows, if it grows, um, is that I wouldn't be the face of it Mm. solely. I want a collective of people that, that come and write songs for it and lead worship for it. And I just be one of those branches that is the tree yeah. Of all of these people that just have that heart of wanting to be in the presence of the Lord, seated in the house of the Lord, right. and we're all just growing under, you know, His light and His love. Mm. Um, yeah, man. So that's Olive Branch, and just for that, go check it. Yeah, out. yeah, go man. check the stuff. Out. So you know, it's got the first album had me, my wife in it, but I'd love for second, third, fourth album for just different local worship leaders, if you know they're down to write or if mm-hmm. they're you know they like a song that we've written or whatever and they want to lead it bam get on there <laughs> yeah, and go I kill know. it bro and and yeah more music videos more you know all that different kind of stuff let's let's bust that out and just i want to i want to rotate all different kinds of things dayton is a wealth of phenomenal musicians and leaders and i would love to just see us all come together and Right, put songs together and yeah. play on each other's stuff, and you know we do that in church anyway. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, you know I play at CLC, play at Vineyard, play at you know Crossroads Dayton right now. Play, you know, at just different local ministries mm-hmm. with all of our friends. One of the the hardest things being on staff at a church is just Sundays take it up. Yeah, and <laughs> it's right. like we don't have the ability to come together and play together and just love on each other and worship. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, man, that's, that's all branch. Awesome, bro. Um, take us through kind of like your process for writing songs, writing, um, music, like I know everybody's different. Sure. So, uh, what's your process to write a hit olive branch? <laughs> um, a lot of it, man, it comes in the morning in lyrics and melody. Mm. Um, a lot of it for me is like I'll, I'll have some kind of a, a hook or some kind of theme that the Lord just lays on my heart. And I'm like, ah, oh, wow. What, what would it look like for that theme to be put into a full song yeah what do i want to say about that that song um one of my more recent ones i i was really done with writing album two is it's getting too daggone big man (laughs) it was like 16 songs so i'm gonna have to split it up again um but i i said i was done with writing woke up in the morning and um olive oil was was something like in my mind and had to do with crushing Mm -hmm. um and i was like ah that's a little (laughs) (laughs) that's interesting okay god what do you want to say about you know the process of creating olive oil and what does that mean as far as anointing oil um and like okay are we are our lives supposed to be the olive that is crushed that produces oil and when we say like our job as christians is to to give and Mm. to be 
you know, a blessing to others, we are literally being God's oil into the world that yeah. is anointing and, you know, all that different kind of stuff. But what does that look like through testimony? Mm. Crushing. Yeah, bro. And like the hard times in life when like, you know, you lose your job or you, you know, lose a loved one mm -hmm. and all that different kind of stuff. How you respond in difficult times, that is your crushing. Yeah. And what is that oil that then goes out and saves another person? And so, you know, concept, what are my verses saying about that? What does my chorus want to say about that? Um, and so... I think my, my chorus for it was, I may be pressed and under pressure, but in the end, that brings the oil. Right. Um, and so how does that verse um, set up that chorus? Um, and so that's how I get my lyrics for my verse. Got my, my chorus. Is there something more I want to say about that that I didn't say in the verse or did I say too much in the first verse that mm -hmm. I could cut that in half and put it as my second verse. Right. Um, and then your bridge. And so you've got, you know, verse chorus one time, you know, second verse, maybe that's half the length of your first verse, double chorus, find your bridge back into your chorus, your end of your song. Um, and so even just having concept of song, will give you vibe and feel. Mm -hmm. Is it a happy song? Is it a darker song? Is it, you know, different stuff like that? And so, yeah, really it starts with lyrics and concept and maybe a, a melody that goes with that that lyric, whether it's a verse or a chorus, mm -hmm. um, and almost reverse engineering some things. But yeah, once that's done... Um, I find chords either through piano or um, guitar and then, you know, we'll track that. We'll track my vocal, go in with keys, go in with bass, go in with electric guitars and then call Kevin and tell him to lay drums on it. And then you've got your demo. <laughs> yeah. Bro. So, yeah, we were spitting out demos for a while there for like once a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Songs were coming yeah. like that. Um, I think I had like 30 songs that I was just vetting and sending to people and saying, Hey, do you vibe with this? What would you change? How would you rework it? Mm -hmm. You know, different stuff like that. But yeah, that's really how quickly some of those songs would pour out. Um, so yeah, it's good. And that song specifically, um, the Lord gave me that song. And then the very next day, I had a crushing moment <laughs> where like it it was bad news, dude. Mm -hmm. And like it took me and my wife through a season of, oh, crap. Like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And like, I just thought it was absolutely hilarious that the Lord would have me write a song about right. going through it before I got the news <laughs> that I was going to be going through it. So yeah, it's crazy. Man. Yeah, dude, that's that's how that works. It's one of those things that like, well, OK, it, it's a song you want released. Mm -hmm. There's something on that song mm -hmm. that you actually want to say. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, man, that's just how the Lord works with it, man. Mm. It's good. So good. All right. Let's take a little let's take yeah. a little uh, different direction. Oh, All come right. on now. What the heck this is this? is a segment that we like to call this <laughs> or that. Super simple. Straight right. off the dome. He has not seen these questions. Literally. Literally. <laughs> it always freaks people out, but they're oh, super man. fun, super easy. All right? Good. So all you have to do. Is pick one, right? Good. This or nope. that. So nope. rapid. Here we go. Okay. This or that. Fender or Gibson? Crap, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first one, bro. Right. Uh, probably Fender now. All right. Uh, Chick-fil-A or Canes? The filet. All right. Videography or photography? Landscape photography. Ooh, nice. Okay. All right. All right. Coffee or tea? Neither. Hey, <laughs> get out of here. Pedals and amp. Or modelers. Pedals and amp, bro. A right there. Live or studio? So, like, 
Like a, yeah, yeah. You Live. Know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our last question for this or that, Kanye or Drake? Sheesh. <laughs> Drake. Hey, okay. I think that's the first Drake that we've had. Anyway, <laughs> this has been this or that. All right, yes, so sir. we can get back into it. That's it's good. just a fun little. That's dope, bro. Just a fun little Love thing. That. It's a little surprise. Come we on. sneak in there. Come on. All right. So uh, we talked about we talked about everything on the board, bro. Yeah, man. Let's get back into. Um, do you have? I know we talked about um, some bands and some uh, songs that had influenced you through guitar hero sure. are there any guitarists now or like over the course of you playing that have influenced you as a player absolutely um michael pope saint pope from the bethel church he's not a hey, bethel bro. anymore um he's in nashville somewhere Somewhere. and john lee at <clears throat> bethel bro Dang. like uh, they are to me the king's of ambient tone the guy like just bethel guitar tone in general is just it, it it's mind-blowing you know i i spend so many hours trying to recreate the tone mm-hmm. and then i feel like i have it and then you listen to them and mm-hmm. you don't no. it's just god has anointed <laughs> those guitar players man and like funny uh i had a, a friend who went to BSSM Mm -hmm. and uh, came out of it, came back to Ohio. And he made a statement one weekend when we were were just talking about music and worship and all that. And he's like, yeah, it's really hard coming from a guitar-driven band to a keys-driven band. Mm. Yes. And I was like, yes, (laughs) that that is exactly... (laughs) why i love bethel yeah. because they are a guitar tone driven band mm-hmm. and most bands are keys driven yeah and i'm like uh oh oh yes i i love that coming from like the guitar player right, so, right. like that's outstanding to see a, a different turn a different take on like how melodies are produced how yeah. you know sections of music are produced through a guitar mm-hmm. rather than than keys and not to say that bethel's not keys heavy mm-hmm. molly skaggs and whoever else that they have playing keys are freaking phenomenal david funk right now mm-hmm. like it's unbelievable My God. yeah right <laughs> um you know uh, unbelievable keys tones and keys pads and things like that that just creates such space and such atmosphere mm-hmm. um but yeah guitar driven band awesome bro uh, so like what's your uh I don't know. So, talk about guitarists. What's like your favorite guitar sound? Like, kind of walk us through. Yeah. Uh, I guess like a couple of pedal um, settings or something. Like sure. your favorite guitar tone to just mess around. Yeah, with. man. So, it it's coupled with one of my favorite moments. Mm-hmm. Talking about, I I love and worship this just unique ability to create atmosphere. It's really, you know, being seated in the the atmosphere and Mm -hmm. the mindset of the kingdom of worship, you know, of um, the Isaiah moment in the throne room of angels singing holy, holy, holy. And Mm -hmm. just like transporting yourself to that mindset man. in worship is just absolutely unique for me and something I fall in love with. Um, So... I I had a friend actually ask me this question. Um, he was an older gentleman. Um, and I'm out on stage, I think, practicing for some ridiculous Christmas <laughs> TSO Miraculum mashup thing that, I, you know, I have to put so many hours into exercising my fingers and, mm-hmm. and warming them up to be able to play that fast and going over the riff over and over and over again to memorize it and all that different kind of stuff. And he comes and I, we're there alone and I'm just there late and he comes out and hears a little bit of what I'm working with. And he's like, I just wish I could, I could do anything like that. Like (laughs) creating sound that sounds like that. It's incredible. You know how fast and how, you know, gritty and cool that sounds to him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
And he's like, what's like, is that your favorite kind of thing to play? Cause you don't play it often. Is that your favorite thing to play? And I'm like, absolutely not. He's like, well, what is? And I'm like, I will show you. And so, um, there's a setting on the big sky, um, uh, where they're to the far top left or right. There's a mix knob mm-hmm. that, um, if you turn your reverb, um, repeat on the cloud setting to like five, six, seven seconds. Um, cloud is a beautiful sounding reverb, but if you turn that mix knob all the way up, it will annihil- completely get rid of your attack. Mm-hmm. So all you're left with is the sound of the verb playing right. that note. Yeah. Um, and I start out, I, I tell him to sit down and I have him close his eyes and I play one note on this sound and I say, how does it make you feel? And like he sits back and you can just see his posture change. And he's like, I feel just an automatic sense of calm. And so I go from playing that note to playing like a D chord, Mm -hmm. um, a low D chord, open D chord. And I'm like, what do you feel now? And he's like, peace and, and love. And I switch up some of the chords to like a, a darker, deeper feel. Um, and he jumps up <laughs> and he's like, Oh my God, wait, 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 wait. And he goes and he gets a Bible and he turns the Bible to the back of the Bible. And he's like, the sound you're playing right now, I've only ever heard in my head when I read this verse. <laughs> And it was the verse that talks about um, the heaven and earth has passed away and behold, the new heaven and earth is descending. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, that is where we're going to spend eternity. And he's like that moment for me when all evil is gone, all sin and death is gone only love and peace and goodness is going to be what we experience and exist in forever. Mm -hmm. The sound you're playing, I've only ever heard in my head (laughs) when I pictured this moment and I look at him and I laugh and I'm like, and and like, we're crying at this moment because (laughs) like we're all looking for that, that day, man, when Christ comes back and, you know, redeems everything in fullness. And, I'm like, bro, I play that sound every weekend. <laughs> every single weekend, that sound is everywhere, mm-hmm. all over the worship set. And he's devastated because he's not paying attention. And from that point on, worship changed for him. <laughs> He would come into the room and he would hear that sound and it would it would just unlock something for him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, bro, you can play fast. You can play heavy. You can have the all the gains stacked in your tone that you want. You can manipulate your hands and fingers to play a billion chords. That one sound mm-hmm. will change. An atmosphere will change your heart, will change everything. And so that is hands down my favorite of any of the sounds, of any of the tones that I can pull out in any worship song. (laughs) You know, stick me at the end of a set when someone's praying Mm -hmm. and I turn that sound on. I could live there. Yeah, I could live there, bro. I don't need to play anything else. (laughs) Incredible. Yeah, man. Crazy, bro. Mm. I'd say I'd get rid of every pedal on my board except for that big sky. Strime in. <laughs> you did something. And, you know, these digital guys, like, I respect it. I love y'all for it. But they ha- and and I have people, they don't have a patch, bro. They don't have that mix knob. <laughs> Not yet. I'll sell every pedal. I'll keep the big sky and I'll get a Kemper. But that Kemper is going into that big sky because, mm. like, I need that sound. It doesn't have it yet. 
So, yeah, yeah man. bro. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, my gosh. What an answer. It's just mind-blowing. It's crazy, like, what different um, guitars so, like, all the pedals in the world. Yeah, man. Everything is so crazy what you can do with all that stuff. Yeah. So crazy. All right. Uh, we're going to ask a fan favorite here. Okay. This is usually somebody a uh, question that everybody um, likes to have. So, as we sit today, what are your top three bands or artists that you are just like boom 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 it's these three right now currently okay well bethel a number one just because the worship style uh polyphia oh we know polyphia yes Yes, sir sir. just (laughs) those kids are insane dude it's stupid i (laughs) i wish i could do all of what they can do man (laughs) i wish i could do (laughs) bro i just (laughs) <laughs> You're right. Even half a yeah. third of what they could do, bro. It's I, I wish. Insane. I um, and then from my nostalgia days, probably August Burns Red or um, Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, There's bro. just something about their guitar tones, their passion, their mm-hmm. their screaming with melody, like you know, all of that different kind of stuff, bro. Just the gambit of of good music, bro. There's great stuff out there being yeah. made. What a top three, bro. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> well, I it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Absolutely, bro. We could do this <laughs> for, for hours. For hours. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I love you, family. You're one of the greatest dudes I know, man. <laughs> you 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 do us us proud, so proud, man. I appreciate like, it. You know, Cogs <laughs> like talking about him like training you up dude and like i i met you and it's like bro he is he's legit and i'm like yeah man he is (laughs) and just the guy you have turned into dude just with integrity and the way that you play there's not many people uh, us us worship guys like we we get it bro there's a gambit of like you know practice or like passion towards Worship music, some people want to like bring like style into it, 80s, 90s, 2000, whatever. But like worship has turned into its own genre of music, Mm -hmm. deserves its own respect. And like to the people who dive in and really like love the tones, love the parts that have been written and and like as a worship leader can stand up on stage and know my band's got my back. I don't got to worry about what they're playing because they're going to play the right stuff, dude. Like, you are him, bro. Oh, man. You are one of the few <laughs> who Making me blush do it, out bro. here, bro. Oh. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Man. Yes, man. All right. Well, I guess we'll dip on out of here. Bro. Yeah, man. I love you guys. I love your family. Yeah, bro. Love always. Your mom. Always, always. Great dudes. Check, check everything <laughs> out. James Hart, Kevin Hart, Brandon Hart. Olive Branch, everything. Check it all out. You guys deserve the best, and it's coming. So do you, bro. Yeah, man. We're, we're, we'll see where all this takes us, bro. Yeah, bro. Because you're coming along for the ride, bro. <laughs> hey. There's ever a tour, dude. You're on it. <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> all right. This, I have been Brayden. This has been James Hart. The, that's right. And this has been Monday with Brayden. Peace out, folks. Outstanding!